The Michaela School is an unusual school in this country. It's a state school that actually teaches something. As a matter of fact, it's one of the best schools in Britain. It was started by Catherine Burblesing, who got fed up of state teaching that encouraged victimhood and underachievement, and who then had to fight the teaching establishment in order to start up a school in an area so deprived that 40% of the children qualify for free school meals, while many of them have at least one parent who doesn't even speak English. As we see from this piece here, from the Office of National Statistics. Across England and Wales, fewer than one in 50 people aged three or over could not speak English well or at all. That's 2% or 863,000. For the majority of local authorities, the inability to speak English well or at all affected less than 1% of the population. However, in areas of London, notably Newham, Brent and Tower Hamlets, and also in Leicester, between 8 and 9% of the population could not speak English well or at all. And these are all areas heavily populated by people with a Pakistani background of some sort. Birbal Singh made her school successful by making and enforcing rules of conduct at the same time as actually expecting the most from her pupils. And she turned that school into an establishment which now regularly sends its graduates to universities like Oxford and Cambridge, a result which people like this clot here in The Guardian would deride as private school attitudes. Uh, Catherine Burblesing is criticised over wasteful free school project. The Tories' favourite teacher <laughs> slammed over her proposed secondary school with a private ethos in North London. That's Brent. And this was, well, as you see, 11 years ago. It's now a very successful school. So, because of uh, articles like this, I've always thought that Miss Burble Singh's main opponents were the sort of people who read The Guardian and vote Labour and uh, pat well, people of various sorts of colour on the head and tell them, well, they can't help failing because uh, yeah, systemic racism or something. But no, it turns out that Miss Burble Singh's worst opponents are not the Guardian readers after all, but her own pupils. No doubt under incitement from parents and imams and the sort of people who, if they had anything to do with the Guardian at all, it would be in neat squares on a hook in the smallest room. And who, so far from feeling grateful and enthused about having their children in a school where education is king, have instead made a positive virtue out of ignorance, militant ignorance, and having got into one of the best schools in England, are now attempting to destroy it from the inside. I'm Granny Opterix. I'm interrupting to remind you to click like and to subscribe and share. Also, I'm constantly being told that YouTube removes subscriptions. So please click the notification bell and check that you really are subscribed. All the links to my other channels are in the description, including links to donation sites. I'm always grateful, of course, for donations, but simply clicking like is the best thing you can do for this video and my channel generally. Thank you. So here's a picture of the Michaela School and there was a prayer band there. Allow me to elucidate. Britain's strictest te head teacher, I was forced to stop Muslim prayers after teachers were racially harassed. 
In a statement shared on Wednesday morning, Miss Burblesing said the school's governing body decided to stop prayer rituals when some pupils started them against a backdrop of events including violence, intimidation and appalling racial harassment of teachers. Uh, Michaela School is facing a legal cha challenge from a pupil who cannot be named over Miss Burble Singh's decision to introduce the ban in March last year. I shall translate. What appears to have happened is this. Some children who did want to say Muslim prayers uh, started to bully other Muslim children who didn't want to uh, spend their time saying the prayers. And because of that, there were uh, f uh, factions started to develop in the schools. And it seems that when the teachers tried to intervene, they were subjected to, well, the sort of racial harassment which seems to be only too common in a uh, Muslim population in uh, in the British, especially Pakistani Muslim population. I mean, it's well known that they have a particular prejudice against Jews, but it's by no means the only prejudice they have. And I don't know quite what they mean by racial harassment, but I can imagine that since the uh, the general term for a black person in Arabic is abd, which means slave. Some of the teachers of perhaps African descent in some way would have come in for some trouble. Uh, also, I suppose, um, white teachers too, although they wouldn't have been called abd. Right. Uh, the high performing state school in Brent, northwest London, has around 700 pupils, about half of whom are Muslim. And the school is known for its strict approach to discipline, including silence in corridors and a ban on smartphones. A number of children have been told they were bad Muslims for not praying and therefore felt themselves forced to pray. Uh, the, uh, the KC, the, uh, the man. The, the lawyer conducting the court case had said. And uh, one, uh, it said here, one girl who had joined the school choir was bullied out of singing in the school choir because she was told it was haram. The very ethos of the school that these uh, more religious or at least more subversive uh, pupils were in they were trying to destroy it. They were trying to turn it into a Muslim school. Miss Burblesing said the decision to ban prayer rituals restored calm and order to the school. So once they'd slapped that down, everything became calm again. Which could be a, a pointer to how our society should be run generally. That is, not giving way to people with an axe to grind. She said, we've always been clear to parents and pupils that when they apply to Michaela, because of our restrictive building combined with our strict ethos, that does not allow children to wander around the school unsupervised, we cannot have a prayer room. And then she said, multiculturalism can only succeed when we understand that every group must make sacrifices for the sake of the whole. That is a, an idea to which many Muslims do not subscribe. The only sacrifices they appear to believe are, are necessary are the sacrifices of everybody else for their particular uh, religion and social setup. The court heard the school was targeted on social media with threats of violence, abuse, 
false allegations of Islamophobia and a bomb hoax, but that the situation had since calmed. Yeah, it had calmed when the school told the pupils they weren't having any of that nonsense. The pupil who's brought the complaint said the school stance on prayer was the kind of discrimination that makes religious minorities feel alienated from society. That's a load of nonsense. You feel alienated when you are being picked on. These students weren't being picked on. They were just being told they couldn't pick on anyone else. And unfortunately, there is a philosophy abroad among a certain section of the Muslim population of this country uh, that they have the right to pick on everyone else. And when they're told not to, that's discrimination. Her lawyers claim that the prayer ban uniquely affects the Muslim faith over other religions due to its ritualized nature and rules around prayer. And yeah, it does affect Muslims uniquely because of their uh, um, practice of praying in groups and you can't just sit there and pray on your own. Well, actually you can, but let's look at that. Yeah, if you are so keen on that, there is an answer. You found a Muslim school where classes are interrupted uh, five times a day or it would be about three times a day for uh, prayer. And that's it. That is your answer. And leave the Michaela school to paddle its own canoe. So uh, Ms. Burble Singh says we have a large number of Muslim pupils. Their positive experiences have helped grow the number of Muslim pupils in the school by 50%. Then she feels constrained to say her grandmother was Muslim. And it's completely irrelevant. But people have to make excuses now for telling Muslims they can't behave badly. The governing body had to take the decision to stop prayer rituals when some pupils started them against a backdrop of events including violence, intimidation and appalling racial harassment. Okay, well, yeah, that's what's happening with the Michaela School. We can take a couple of lessons from this. The first is that you can run a school of uh, children who are deprived, who have parents who don't speak English, at all or not that well, who have a completely different um, cultural background and can still get into top universities with a handful of top exam results. If that school makes rules and doesn't tell pupils they're bound to fail because white privilege or I don't know, whatever, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that when you get Muslim agitators trying to take over an institution, whether it's a school, a hospital or the whole country, all you have to do is say, no, we have certain rules here. You do your own thing in your own time, but this is the way we do things. And suddenly everything goes quiet. Order, as they said, pointing at the screen again, as they say here, Order is restored. Well, that's a life lesson, isn't it? All right. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and T-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grembo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.